uh, in this session uh, today we will discuss about a uh, few science topics uh, that are currently uh, going in Indian context and the science updates and also the developments of science in India so what actually is the Einsteinium and also the world what actually is the Einsteinium and what as RT-PCR test what it is and how it is done Stardust 1.0 it is the first rocket to run on the biofuel we will know about the Stardust 1.0 and also the square kilometer uh, array uh, observatory is a basically radio telescope and also we'll discuss about the hope UAE's first mission to Mars and China's Tianwen-1 probe uh, in Mars to the Mars and also ISRO announces the Bhuvan portal we'll learn about those Bowen portal what actually it is and why ISRO is using the geospatial technology uh, in developing the portal such as APIs and using the applicable uh, application programmable interface to the private players and also we will discuss about the NASA's Perseverance rover and NASA's, Perse NASA's Perseverance mission ethanol as an alternative fuel and its uh, current trends in India and parliamentary panel uh, report on 5G in India 17 major OTT players adopt self-regulatory toolkit what actually is the term uh, net neutrality referred to and national polio immunization program Kapila campaign for IPR that is intellectual property rights and uh, to for raising the awareness the Kapila campaign and Brukesia Nana uh, it is a uh, famous uh, in the news Madagascar it's world's smallest reptile I uh, will see about that and furnace oil what what are the recent it is news uh, furnace oil that's oil spill in the Kerala coast and also the Vignan Jyoti program uh, for the stem for the women in the uh, science and technology career as a career and also the world radio day uh, we'll learn about the world radio day and also Dickinsonia and uh, that's the uh, uh, oldest uh, oldest fossil that we have got in the world uh, Dickinsonia oldest living uh, fossil and also the Sanders NIC messaging platform that is developed by National Informatics Center and also the Facebook blocks access to the news in the Australia we will discuss about that bargaining code and also the what does the, what does the term software defined radio mean SDR that's term in the usual electronics language SDR software defined radio what actually that means and also Zool Jensma gene therapy it's uh, nearly related to the genetic fields and also the genetic uh, genetic engineering uh, in the med in medical or biotechnology can call uh, Zool Jensma gene therapy and its use and also the collection of the DNA samples will lead to the misuse and how those DNA samples will lead to the misuse so these are the topics that we're going to see here in this Uh, so what actually is the Einsteinium? What actually is Einsteinium? So why it is in use? See, uh, first of all, uh, let us know what actually Einsteinium is. Uh, from the debris of the first hydrogen bomb, we got a traces of Einsteinium metal. Uh, when does the first hydrogen bomb has been detonated? Actually in the 1952, the detonation of the thermonuclear device called IV Mike in the Pacific Ocean has been done uh, has been done because of the explosion of the uh, thermonuclear device called IV Mice in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, from the debris uh, that the hydrogen bomb that has created in 1952 we have found the traces of the Einsteinium first of all Einsteinium uh, cannot be found uh, in a small traces uh, first of all it cannot be visible with our naked eye because of small traces in the quantity and we need a good quality good quantity of pileup that is required uh, to at least uh, observe it uh, uh, in the microscope so also it is of high, highly radioactive Einsteinium uh, with uh, atomic number 99 it belongs to a transuranic element because of uh, uh, uranium is 92 uh, so above the 92 uh, atomic number because of its 99 it's, it belongs to a transuranic elements Einsteinium and it's, it's also very highly radioactive uh, because of uh, and also it's not uh, visible to naked eye because of its highly radioactive and uh, with a short T life it barely exists in, our, in the planet because of its high uh, T half so the common isotopes of the Einsteinium is uh, basically ES-253 uh, with a half-life of 20 days I think approximately 20 to 21 days uh, with a radioactive uh, half-life and Einsteinium-254 is a stable isotope that's because but it's not a common isotope the common isotope is Einsteinium-253 uh, but the Einsteinium-254 is a stable isotope with a half-life of large very large isotope because of its stableness it has a very half very uh, long t, t half uh, half life of 270 days nearly of nearly you can call it as one month or uh, uh, nine months you can call it as uh, so that is basically about Einsteinium uh, so why uh, it's in use Einsteinium it's in use because of the uh, uh, because of the uh, Einsteinium 
uh, th theory that is going on uh, how the properties the scientists came to know about some few of the properties of the Einsteinium uh, like uh, it's basically a silverish uh, soft and paramagnetic basically it's a paramagnetic Einsteinium so the scientists have found uh, the properties of the Einsteinium uh, in the coming years so that is the current news and uh, and what actually means RT-PCR test next topic uh, RT-PCR test and in mainly you can see in the COVID-19 SARS-CoV-2 and how it is done basically RT-PCR test uh, see it's basically about RNA virus uh, COVID-19 uh, the that basically that we have seen this uh, all uh, things it's basically of an rna virus what actually the rna virus is uh, basically rna virus it's uh, it uh, what it multiplies as a dna uh, that is it converts itself into the dna and then and so uh, so rt pcr test uh, for the identification of sars cov2 in the dna has become very much popular see and basically what actually it is done in this rt pcr test is nothing but uh, rna is being converted to dna through the process called uh, reverse transcription that is rna is being converted to dna for defecting uh, detecting because uh, dna can be able to be easily detected when compared to the rna so the rna may uh, uh, multiple samples of the multiple copies of uh, rna uh, dna is being done uh, that is RNA that is converted into DNA is transformed from a single cell and again those DNA has been able to multiple multiple copies are prepared for sampling so it's basically nothing but uh, our, our virus our target virus is COVID-19 SARS-CoV-2 that is RNA virus and that infiltrates the healthy cell and multiply it and survive so to identify for identification we use reverse transcriptions uh, reverse transcription is nothing but the process uh, by converting the RNA to DNA for detecting and also the SARS-CO2 is generally detect detectable in respiratory specimens uh, during the acute phase of the infection uh, further upper and lower respiratory specimens such as nasal uh, nasal cavities are collected uh, nasal samples are collected this sample is treated with several chemical solutions that remove the substances such as proteins and fats and extracts only the RNA present in the sample that is a purely sample it removes all the plasma and additional fats and additional uh, cells it extracts only the RNA present in the sample and real-time RCPCR test is usually done in, in 35 cycles but that's not an important so what actually that's important is uh, uh, RNA -wise uh, the virus is RNA virus in order to detect the RNA virus we need to convert that RNA virus into the DNA using the reverse transcription method for detecting so in the real-time PCR test RT-PCR test nearly 35 cycles uh, is done generally 35 cycles is done from a single sample in the 35 cycles nearly 35 billion copies are from a single strand is made so you can imagine that such a huge process so hence because of this multiplication process it requires huge time in taking the results so rt pcr test is a confirmatory test but not as an uh, but uh, is a confirmatory test but uh, uh, in order to say uh, it's a confirmatory test but uh, for a quick uh, uh, test uh, what uh, at least uh, the exposed to the virus for a quick test uh, we does not require R it doesn't require rt pcr uh, basic uh, antibody test is required uh, uh, basic antibody test is uh, enough uh, to confirm that uh, there is a presence of some virus but the confirmatory test is rt pcr test so that is aim, uh, keeping in mind and so also uh, we have dna marker labels available so basically what happens is uh, as a new copies of the viral dna are built uh, the marker labels attached to the, there are some markers attached to the DNA stands uh, so what happens is those DNA markers uh, those release the fluorescent dye th which is measured by the machine computer and that is presented in the real time so basically uh, for a particular marker uh, we see a particular type of fluorescent dye and the computer tracks the amount of fluorescence in the sample after the each cycle when the amount goes over a certain level of the fluorescence this confirms that the virus is present so there is a limit ceiling limit you can call it as that has been kept so DNA markers labels have been kept to the DNA, DNA established and fluorescent dye limits are 
described so this is all about the rt pcr test sars cov2 that is how it is done also clearly we have seen and also another uh, main things we have to keep in mind is uh, the difference between the rna and dna and also the difference between the rt pcr test and the antibody test that we have already discussed uh, whereas rt pcr test is a confirmatory test whereas, uh, whereas a antibody test does not uh, is not a confirmatory test uh, it's just a sufficient or enough condition uh, uh, to have a virus exposure on our body and what actually is the rna virus and how it survives and what actually the use uh, purpose of the rna uh, in our body and what are antibodies that so basically the, that is about the significance of rt pcr test we have discussed and next is us based stardust 1.0 the first rocket to run on a biofuel us based stardust 1.0 uh, it's the first rocket to run on the biofuel it's basically a launch vehicle suited for the students and the budget payloads because of its small capacity and um, what actually the biofuels see uh, stardust 1.4 is basically run on the biofuel compared to the traditional rocket fuel rocket fuel is very uh, it uh, causes harm to the or damage to the environment but whereas uh, biofuel which is done uh, with the help of the carbons or with the help of the agri, agri waste or any some those are the type of again there is a separate classification of the, the sources of the biofuel that that uh, we don't go that much deeper into that because of the biofuels that's entirely different topics of uh, agricultural agro and also the biofuel topics so basically the stardust 1.0 uh, replacing the uh, traditional rocket fuel we take the biofuel as a fuel and uh, in the launch vehicle so uh, basically if you use the biofuel uh, the capacity to uh, hold the payload the payload capacity will obviously reduce so uh, in reducing the payload capacity we use a small size engines and also we will carry it carries only a small type of payloads so hence it is uh, uh, this type of launch vehicle is basically suited for the student and the budget payloads and the biofuels is basically an organic matter uh, or living organisms or once existed once existed living organisms or basically you can call it as all organic matter so when a fuel or a hydrocarbon fuel imprecise can be generated from the organic matter that basically we have a hydrocarbons and uh, the carbons in the living and uh, organisms so when we prepare hydrocarbon fuel from the organic matter this is called the biofuels and in india we have a national biofuel policy 2018 in that we have a huge classification of 1g ethanol uh, the biofuel that we use uh, we have a ambitious target of uh, nearly making a 30 uh, 20 percent ethanol blending program we have of uh, making into the petrol and fuel 15 to 5 percent uh, in the diesel biodiesel you can call it as so there is uh, there is a target set in the uh, ethanol blended program and also the national policy on the biofuels 2018 they have different classifications of 2g ethanol uh, 2g ethanol 1g ethanol 3g ethanol and so on uh, based on the different sources that we used in the biofuel and uh, the main uh, the mainly the biofuel uh, in the that is mentioned in the national biofuel policy 2018 is uh, jatropha uh, and sorghum water hyacinth uh, that is basically uh, water hyacinth can be also be used as a biofuel in making a biofuel and sorghum jatropha uh, so these are the highly starch content uh, that is available we can use this as a biofuel and uh, let's move on to next topic of square kilometer array observatory or skao council so what actually the square kilometer array observatory council is uh, basically uh, what's actually in news is this square kilometer array observatory council skao council has approved for the establishment of the world's largest radio telescope uh, that's in news and one thing to uh, note this this is not a single antenna telescope uh, unlike the other previous telescopes largest telescopes this is an array of telescopes you can see in the name square kilometer that is a square kilometer area of each antenna of a square kilometer uh, diameter uh, square kilometer area you can call and those areas in an array so that those that, that's basically difference between the square kilometer array observatory council and the a single unit standalone uh, observatory radio telescope it is approved uh, this council skao council has approved for the establishment of the world's largest radio telescope and what actually the skao is nothing but uh, see every uh, institutional uh, parameters uh, every institutional organization in technology they, they are basically formed of intergovernmental organizations and where uh, and skao is no exception to it 
is a square kilometer observatory array observatory is basically an intergovernmental organization in the radio astronomy field see radio astronomy it's a main component in the radio astronomy is the radio telescope uh, that is the main and important most important component in learning and study of uh, radio astronomy uh, this SKAO council is headquartered at UK United Kingdom with the 10 member countries like Canada that is present at 10 member countries and whereas there is a few more also in Africa Japan Italy and so on so these main 10 member countries are Canada UK Netherlands Sweden Italy South Africa India, China, Australia and New Zealand. So these are the 10 member countries and also the, what actually the radio telescope is. How it is different from the optical telescope that is also should be considered. Radio telescope basically detects invisible gas. <coughs> it basically detects uh, the invisible gas. Also it is nothing to do with the visible spectrum because uh, we, we the space objects uh, uh, not only can be seen through the visible spectrum, uh, it also emits uh, uh, radiations it also emits signals from the entire electromagnetic spectrum so uh, in the electromagnetic spectrum these radio waves uh, have been detected from the radio telescopes so these also detect the invisible gases because that are not visible with our naked eye from the visible spectrum so in 1930s first radio signals physicist Carl Jansky has detected the first radio telescope signals from the outer space an uh, Arecibo telescope example uh, it is in Puerto Rico in the Caribbean islands uh, I think uh, Arecibo uh, telescope is the uh, second largest single dish radio telescope I am saying this because it is uh, it is a single dish ra radio telescope uh, but um, the SKO is an array it's not a single dish Arecibo telescope in Puerto Rico uh, it fu it functioned till 1963 to 2020 it is the second largest single dish radio telescope SKAO telescope is the largest telescope radio telescope in the world and it is it's it's a uh, in the next 10 years it's going to complete I think and so what the locations are in South Africa and also the uh, so Africa and also the Africa is also been collaboration nearly eight countries of Africa and Australia by the next decade uh, it's nearly estimated cost of nearly 1.8 billion euros uh, it has been uh, so so that is in the news of SKO obser observatory and next is Pope UAE Arab first mission to the Mars called Red Planet Hope UAE uh, Hope is the UAE Arab or we can call it Arabs first mission to the Mars Red Planet uh, we have seen US Russia China India and European Space Agency but uh, this uh, Hope uh, Arab Hope mission of Arab is the first mission to the Mars uh, red planet. Uh, so, uh, Hope is also called as Al Amal uh, in the Arabic world. Arabic word Al Amal orbiter. We ha it has a, see basically what actually uh, ex uh, uh, exploration means. Exploration has a experiment or a mission has some stages. First of all, uh, the target or goal it should be set. Where it should be either uh, suppose uh, the mission is on for a planet. It should be a first thing uh, in an orbiter stage. That is orbiter stage is nothing but uh, whether it is revolving around the planet and collecting the geographical atmospheric information. So that is first stage uh, goal. Second st second goal is whether the, the goal should also include landing stage. That is from the atmospheric circulation uh, like a satellite orbiter or to enter into the atmospheric of a atmospheric of a planet uh, with the help of a lander when the lander enters the atmosphere of a planet then it lands onto the planet see landing is also depends upon two types that is soft landing and hard landing uh, hard, soft landing and hard landing so after the landing has completed or successfully completed without any uh, damage uh, we can call uh, from that lander we, it emerges a rover rover that uh, that uh, uh, rover uh, that comes from the lander uh, it uh, travels on the land surface of the, an external planet and it collects the sample data rocks uh, and also the composition it uh, estimates the composition it has an imager payload and also the scanner spectrum image analyzer and also uh, it, it extracts the composition of the uh, surface uh, uh, surface soil composition metallurgical uh, metallurgical uh, studies and also exploration uh, water uh, existence of water it uh, sees the existence of water 
and uh, so basically what does it does uh, whenever it to if you go to any external space we first thing is we will analyze the soil composition the soil composition can be analyzed with the help of ir reflector and we can um, also the image analyzer ir spectrum analyzer and also the um, imager payload uh, for capturing the images and also uh, sample Uh, sample taker that is digger mine it, it digs the mine in the external space so that is it uh, al amal orbiter uh, is in the hope mission it uh, basically does the atmosphere and weather uh, pattern it uh, it uh, uh, calculates the atmospheric and weather patterns and uh, what is the official name given to this hope mission is nothing but emirates uh, mars mission emm we call it as and emirates mars mission emirates mars mission it, it has a mission life of ma one martian year see one martian year uh, martian year that is one year in the mars uh, is approximately nothing but two earth years we can call it as and also the to study the weather map and also to study the lower atmospheric results uh, so official name is emirates mars mission and the emission life is one martian year or two earth years uh, to find out the weather map of the planet mars and study the lower and upper atmosphere and also the weather uh, see there is a unique thing in the mars that is uh, the escape of hydrogen and oxygen in the upper atmosphere so why the escape there is an escape of hydrogen and oxygen to the upper atmosphere see why mars losing these gases into the space so that is one mysterious mysterious question uh, that uh, we need to be find out in the mars exploration in this emirates mars mission and also the red planet red planet why we all going to this red planet basically earth red uh, this mars is once habitable previously some billion years of ago the uh, mars is habitable and it has water and organic matter that exist in the mars Uh, we can call we can say that um, and presently to the human kind mars is the only planet uh, that we can find a future habitable zone that can be seen uh, future human humanitarian uh, humanitarian ex uh, exploration or uh, habitable exploration that the planet only planet that is available is the mars uh, the exceptions can be available uh, uh, by forming the portals loop portals or energy uh, transitions between energy uh, loops uh, that can be transferred uh, to move into the distant galaxies uh, that we can't say uh, science cannot be always be predictable so next thing is china's uh, tianwen one probe Uh, it entered uh, what recently news is it entered the mars orbit mars uh, it's basically the unique peculiar feature of the china tianwen probe is uh, it enters the mars northern hemisphere northern hemisphere see our uh, gaganyan mission gaganyan 2 or uh, not gaganyan chandrayaan 2 uh, mission basically has been um, uh, with a soft landing expected to be soft landing in the southern atmosphere basically because southern atmosphere does not comes uh, in direct contact with the sun and hence there is a scope for our uh, to find out the traces of its origin uh, or uh, uh, origin of our earth but uh, it's uh, however supposedly with uh, some uh, some trouble uh, it has gained due to the uh, tr transitioning or uh, speeding up of uh, event in the satellite uh, speeding up events uh, it has been some damage has been made but what actually the this tanwerman probe it uh, it neglects the southern hemisphere and basically lands at the northern hemisphere mars north hemisphere is called utopia plantia so Tanwerman probe lands in Utopia Plantia in Mars. See, that is southern hemisphere of Moon. I am saying, I am talking about. So basically, this Tanwerman probe is of Mars. India, uh, Gaganyaan two of m Moon, but here. Uh, china tianwen one mars of northern hemisphere it's basically uh, lands on the utopia plantia in 1970s nasa's viking 2 mission also landed here uh, in mars northern hemisphere utopia plantia viking 2 mission that uh, that uh, that has to be kept in mind and th this tianwen one uh, is also called hyukseung one hyukseung one china's first mars probe uh, it has orbiter lander and rover that has been already been discussed so th there is we uh, to put a satellite or an orbiter into space we need a launch vehicle right so that launch vehicle used by the chinese tianwen one probe is long march 5 rocket and it achieve if achieved if china has achieved this success in landing and exploring the china mars northern hemisphere it is uh, it is it can be the fourth country like after ussr us and china sorry uh, it will be a third 
country to do so after USSR, US and next China. And five core scientific objectives uh, that is there in the, uh, this mission is, is obviously metallurgical uh, advancements, metallurgical uh, quest like how the composition, soil composition, minerals, materials, mining and create a geological map of Mars, Martian soil, uh, create a geological map of Mars, Martian soil and locate water ice deposits, uh, create a geological map and uh, Martian soil analyzing and locate the water ice deposits, analyze the surface material composition, Martian atmosphere and climate at the surface and electromagnetic and gravitational field of the planet examine and also the any life exists in the planet. So th that will be the basic uh, that things. And next thing is the is next topic is ISRO announces the Bhuvan Bhuvan portal. See who uh, actually announces this? ISRO has uh, why actually it's in news is nothing but ISRO has made an MOU uh, with a CE Info Systems, a private uh, firm, uh, using an MOU for geospatial technology development or creating a holistic geospatial uh, portal called uh, geospatial portal Bhuvan. Uh, it's basically used for geospatial data services and analytics analysis tools uh, how uh, if we consider how that does we have already private players like map my india using the apis uh, applica application programmable interface of uh, uh, isro map my india is also a website basically actually this map my india website is owned by this private firm ce info systems that has been done mou with the isro now earth obser observation data satellites and the uh, data that we are obtained from the navic uh, that things Navi we will discuss later now uh, and uh, Vedas but actually there is also like uh, three uh, special portals especially made by the ISRO that is Bhuvan, uh, Vedas and Mosdak. Bhuvan is basically geospatial data uh, services and analytics tools and Vedas is basically a virtual visualization of earth observation data and archival systems and uh, it's basically used for problem solving, academia, data analytics, data computing and R&D and problem solving. So Vedas of uh, visualization of earth observation visualization of earth uh, observation data and archival systems is basically for the academia and R&D and problem solving and also even for the private firms who want to interested in APIs of Vedas and uh, next thing is MOSDAC 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 is basically a meteorological and oceanographic satellite data archival systems uh, is basically a data repository you can do everything in that for all the meteorological it collects data it generates the data of all meteorological missions of the ISRO and weather oceanography tropical water cycles etc so any private firm uh, who is interested can now take participate in the take the data api from this mosdaq and uh, vedas uh, navic many has in doubt what actually is a navic see navic is basically navigation with indian constellation uh, we can call it as irnss indian regional national satellite systems uh, navigation satellite systems uh, irnss uh, basically of consist of eight uh, that uh, basically consist of eight uh, satellites uh, uh, regional navigation satellite of india and uh, it basically collect the data both the positional information and so on and uh, it's basically of indigenous thing indian and uh, also india plus 1500 kilometers around the data also it collects if uh, any friendly nations interested i can uh, outsource uh, from our navic isro uh, data's uh, for their uh, disaster management also also hate relief operations it has uh, basically offers two uh, services standard positioning positioning service sps for all users irrespective to private firms that at all and also a restricted service restricted service is only for the authorized users uh, considering the national security in concern and uh, one of the satellites of uh, eight irns satellites uh, is having a messaging system between the two satellite and the ground stations and the three of eight geostationary uh, three of eight uh, irns satellites of uh, geostationary uh, over in the indian ocean is basically of a uh, geostationary over the indian ocean there are fixed above, above the indian ocean and four of eight of the irns has geosynchronous uh, they move in the, in the shape of eight you can see in the map uh, in the net and global navigation system is basically if if a country possesses a regional uh, or regional indigenous uh, global navigation system which the us has uh, like uh, you can see google maps which uses the gps global positioning system 
uh, the the see the google uh, that is ba us based company uh, G uh, G uh, what uh, gps systems but india is also required to have its own gps system indigenous uh, uh, navigation system uh, like uh, irnss satellites uh, and a uh, global navigation system if a country possess such a huge quality technological capability it can be a net security provider in the region hence the india can be said as a net security provider in the region with covering india as well as 1500 kilometers uh, outskirts of the india with irnss satellite systems uh, it is a very proud achievement for our india and isro is now currently uh, looking forward in the geospatial uh, service sector and nasa perseverance rover basically is a mission carried out in 2020 uh, the landing site is zero crater on the mars Uh, for looking for an ancient uh, life, ancient life signs of an ancient life, or if any life exists on the Mars, the zero crater is important. So the crater, the zero crater in the Mars, uh, Perseverance rover is landing on the zero crater to collect the samples of the rock and the regolith. Regolith is basically the upper surface of the Earth or any land uh, consisting of the dust, sand, or rock particles. So that is called the regolith, and bringing them back to the Earth and uh, the main unique unique feature of this uh, perseverance rover is uh, the fuel uh, that is needed to sustain this perseverance uh, mission is of plutonium radioactive decay the heat generated from this plutonium radioactive decay is used in the perseverance rover and it has shape memory alloys it is basically made of shape memory alloys see what is a what actually is a shape memory alloy is nothing but uh, uh, it is when it is cold it gets deformed when it is hot it it is uh, is a it is like a strong uh, metal object so that is a uniqueness obviously in the space uh, in the mars uh, we see uh, sunlight and heat that is been produced so it uh, it is free from the deformations that uh, that takes place with the uh, interactions with the asteroid belt uh, over the mars and jupiter belt you can call it as habitable zone or goldilocks zone we can call uh, so so basically it is a heat resistant uh, with the help of shape memory alloys and also there are two main uh, special experiments that has been carried out in the perseverance rover that is moxi that is mars oxygen in situ resource utilization experiment for the first time uh, it has been taken uh, manufacturing of uh, molecular oxygen uh, on mars by a co2 and isro is basically nothing but moxi moxi is nothing but mars oxygen in situ resource utilization experiment and next thing is ingenuity helicopter helicopter to fly on mars so there is a unique thing about this ingenuity ingenuity because uh, ingenuity uh, there is a unique thing about this ingenuity because uh, mars at martian atmosphere is not like uh, the what is presenting on the earth there is a li very little uh, what uh, the quantity or dense quantity of air present in the martian atmosphere so it is uh, difficult to uh, lift an object by creating a pressure or inward thrust uh, uh, on the land so Uh, but but the nasa scientist has made the ingenuity helicopter such that it even uh, rotates and also it even flies uh, with such a thin or a, a very uh, spaced sparsely dense atmosphere it can also uh, lift on sparsely dense atmosphere in a basically of 2 to 3 hours or 2 to 3 minutes like that so previous mars missions uh, of nasa are in 1997 mars has uh, to the mars nasa has sent pathfinder mission mars pathfinder mission it has been successed uh, in 1997 and in 2003 spirit and opportunity twin rovers in 2000 in 1997 mars pathfinder mission and 2003 spirit and opportunity twin rovers in 2012 curiosity mission so these are the three missions of previous missions to the mars by the nasa and this is the latest perseverance mission perseverance rover so that is the thing and next topic is ethanol as an alternative fuel see it it is it, it, it ethanol can act as a blended stock and ethanol we have in india we have an uh, ethanol blended petrol program uh, it's an ebp program you can call it as an ambitious target of uh, nearly 20% ethanol blending in petrol by 2030 and national uh, policy on biofuels nbp 2018 is uh, comes under this ethanol blended program and government fixed the uh, see what there are some steps taken by the government uh, for example government has fixed the x mill price of an ethanol from sugarcane uh, that is a uh, 
the ethanol obtained from the sugar cane uh, it has created an x mill price that is uh, a bare minimum price that, that has been to be given to the ethanol ma manufactured from the uh, sugar cane and also the remunerative prices to the farmers and also the interest subvention for the uh, distilleries for the uh, bio refineries and distilleries uh, based on the ethanol planting uh, based on the ethanol plantations for the blending of petrol and uh, ethanol is basically can be prepared from the high starch content materials such as sugar cane see mainly in india it is done by the sugar cane to accept that and also it can be done with the help of maize wheat and so on basically which has a uh, high starch content uh, and ethanol plus gasoline that is uh, that's called blending program we, we will get different blends of uh, fuel basically what i why this ethanol is particularly of interest is nothing but ethanol as an oxygen molecule in that oxygen atom you can call it as in ethanol that helps in complete combustion of fuel uh, of gasoline you can call and that reduces the emissions so and the next topic is a uh, parliamentary panel report on the 5g in india see department of telecommunications uh, uh, has make the made the steps see what uh, the 5g see there are many play uh, there are very few players in the telecom industry currently in the two, uh, in india like jio airtel v and so on see this is uh, the uh, jio airtel and v this makes uh, an investment or competition le very less it's like oligopoly that has been uh, existed and this oligopoly can transform into the monopoly in future so what uh, there are few problems Th this has created few problems in launching of 5g in india there the, there has been a parliamentary panel report that has been submitted uh, a report on 5g in india uh, like a uh, department of telecommunication report tells that uh, uh, it wanted to make the steps to make india a 5g ready by 2018 but it has been obviously delayed and uh, approvals delayed by approvals spectrum reserve there are some problems like uh, approval delay spectrum has high price high reserve price for the spectrum it makes elimination of uh, competition and also inadequate and poor development of test cases there are few very two 5g test beds available in the country and those are uh, uh, only uh the research that has been done is purely limited to the academic research and the private player research in the 5g test beds is very limited whereas our jio uh, has launched a few ji uh, has made it as own 5g test bed and 5g indigenous built 5g network it has just launched 5g in the next few years to come and also a low reach of optical fiber across the india uh, has also made a few problem to our uh, 5g reach inadequate and poor development of test cases low reach of uh, optical fiber cables across the india deficient backhaul capacity that is nothing but uh, the background networks low backhaul capacity uh, that is basically the backhaul overhaul capacity of uh, telecom networks uh, all the uh, what uh, handling or call transferring signal transferring operations and also the uh, call uh, exchanging or transferring operations frequency shift operations and also the end to end uh, uh, call transferring uh, those operations so uh, that is backhaul capacity that that means by uh, the network operations that has been done uh, by the telecom operators uh, uh, from the tower that is tower to tower uh, backhaul backhaul is nothing but uh, instead of front end between the phone to tower the backhaul the backhaul is basically important the backhaul capacity must be improved uh, with a new 5g telecom equipment that must be upgraded uh, for every operator and uh, department of telecommunication uh, and department of space and defense ministry they combined uh, they take the decision on allocating allocation of the spectrum allocation because department of telecommunication and Sp department of space as well as the defense ministry because of uh, security concerns uh, taken into consideration and in 5g in india the 5g basically has a gbps peak rates low latency Uh, massive capacity uh, so that is all about the 5g massive capacity low latency high speed peak rates and uh, so what actually india is need is uh, the current india needs a road map of frequency bands that must be allocated uh, to the different uh, what are the frequency that is going to be allocated in the spectrum with their uh, specific reserve price in the future so we need a road map for the spectrum of 5g 5g spectrum in india by the government and also the main problem is no adequate capital to the competitors or, uh, or telecom operators in the country so another topic we'll move on to the another topic uh, that is 17 major ott uh, players adopt self regulatory code uh, it's basically in news because of the internet and mobile association of india has recently appealed 
to the telecom uh, try uh, that so no basically the internet and mobile association of india has followed a self regulatory code uh, basis uh, on from the undertaking of universal self regulation code for online curate content providers occp from september 4 2020 so it's basically drawn from a universal self regulation code uh, for online curate content providers and uh, so this uh, has made for the this has made as a self certification you can call it as self self certification has been made by the 17 ott platforms uh, uh, under the imai internet and mobile association of india platform this code basically prohibits five types of content uh, like disrespects towards the national emblem flag and also the visual or uh, lines or story lines of that promotes the child porno pornography and sexual content so this respect about national flag emblem and pornography content has been banned from this ott this is basically self certification uh, self regulation code not about the regulation by the government mm. and ott so you all have doubts about ott ott basically means that over the top content providers are called ott it it has ma- mainly uses internet as a platform internet as a medium uh, to channelize their unique content that is their unique copyrighted content they channelize through the medium called internet that is available digitally and uh, it has both audio plus video internet calling and messaging services are also there so that is about uh, ott we move on to next topic called net neutrality the term net neutrality is basically uh, in news recently why because of uh, cellular operators association of india Cellu- coai has appealed for the try uh, to defer the new net neutrality rules uh, that has been taking place by the trai uh, to bring and also appeal for the try to bring the ott uh, otts that provide instant messaging and uh, video calling features uh, to bring into the uh, domain of net neutrality and also the licensing regime of try uh, so what actually uh, currently going is the apps like whatsapp uh, video calling features duo and many facebook video calling these are does not come under try regulations or uh, try licensing regime so the telecom operators now asking or uh, urging for the t- try to bring these ott players into the uh, to bring these ott players into the platform into the licensing regime of try and also defer the also defer this net, net neutrality rules uh, till that uh, bringing of ott players has been done so uh, let us defer this net neutrality rules to us says the coa that is the uh, cellular operators association of india but the try is uh, the try has is opinion that no regulations can be uh, put onto the ott platforms till a international consensus is obtained or international clarity is obtained so coa till the new traffic management and net neutrality rules should be applied on the coa on telecom operators that has been demand put by the coa what actually is the net neutrality mean see net neutrality means nothing but uh, government and internet service providers uh, treat all data on internet equally that is uh, there is no special treatment to a particular website and downstreaming of uh, another website that is throttling must be uh, throttling and blocking of certain websites and preferential uh, speed or preferential treatment to certain websites must be blocked there is no differential charge on the consumers for higher quality delivery of service and also the preferential treatment to a particular website must be made so that is all about net neutrality were try that is telecom regulatory authority of india has uh, came in 2018 with uh, net neutrality principles 2018 the internet service provider uh, basically has to give provide equal access so these uh, the overview of net neutrality principles 2018 tells us that internet service provider e- has should have equal access and speeds to all the websites and prohibit uh, blocking throttling and preferential speeds so this is all about the net neutrality and next moving on to the national polio immunization program 2021 our government has started a universal immunization program way back in 1990s uh, for the first i think so polio uh, for the children aged 0 to 5 years polio drops have been uh, given uh, t- nearly two times a year in the early sundays uh, it is called polio ravi war uh, see what actually is the reason for the national immunization program there are few diseases which can be prevented by vaccines those are called vaccine preventable diseases so to cure the people Uh, or the most vulnerable sections of the society from these vaccine uh, uh, 
from this uh, vaccine diverted means those uh, diseases can be diverted or uh, eradicated that is vaccine preventable diseases those are called vaccine preventable diseases so for these vaccine preventable diseases uh, our indian government uh, has uh, those vaccine preventable diseases are also life threatening so our indian government has started universal immunization program in that immunization universal immunization program there is a submission called national polio immunization program 2021 see national polio immunization program has recently or in a way back it started but But also India has been also been declared as polio free in 2014. But uh, it, that that status of polio free India can only exist until the latest outbreak of polio emerges. See recent uh, recent uh, threats or recent uh, uh, in cases in Pakistan and Afghanistan regarding the polio virus uh, like vaccine. Uh, vaccine derived polio virus diseases have been uh, seen in our in the uh, neighbors so in fear so let us uh, uh, vaccine the unvaccinated people in the past so in the past who are unvaccinated in, uh, in the polio imm- polio immunization in this latest national polio immunization program 21 so the main focus should be on the unvaccinated people and pregnant women and also Uh, the pregnant women who missed the previous uh, vaccination uh, trials uh, and also the children with the age group of 0 to 5 years two times an year it is given polio virus is given two times an year and uh, it is given mainly on sundays uh, so it is called polio revivar so it is uh, famously known as polio revivar so uh, uh, national polio Im- national immunization day nid is celebrated on 31st january every year so uh, basically the polio virus is caused by polio mellitus virus Uh, virus it's basically of muscular paralysis uh, happens to the body that is this polio virus is given in two forms that is opv oral polio virus vaccine and also ipv that is inactivated polio virus vaccine so the virus causing agent is it is caused by virus then the name of the virus is polio mellitus virus so what has happens the symptoms like muscular paralysis happens so that is about the national polio immunization program and next comes the kapila campaign for ipr that is uh, our government has started uh, uh, a kapila minister of education has started the kapila campaign for intellectual property rights awareness program see the kapila is a meaning is an, a short form for kalam program for I, I, in, uh, intellectual property rights literacy and awareness campaign this ipr awareness is mainly required obviously in private industries the ipr regime uh, continues but in uh, from the scratch or to nurture the innovations that existed in the universities and uh, universities the innovations by the students or the innovations by the teachers or uh, researchers so to protect those innovations uh, the awareness required in the in terms of in the field of intellectual property rights so the kalam pro- the kalam program for intellectual property rights literacy and awareness campaign Uh, this kalam program uh, this kapila campaign helps uh, to bring the awareness in higher education institutions uh, so basically it deals with ip protection that is intellectual property rights protection of inventions by faculty as well as students uh, and also to give training courses to the students and also credit courses on intellectual property rights uh, so this is about the Kala- kapila campaign for ipr next comes next topic is the topic is brookes uh, brookesia nana brookesia nana it's uh, see brookesia nana it is a small type of chameleon you can call it is world's smallest chameleon ever discovered uh, it is found in the madagascar near the africa region and uh, it is basically a reptile family so uh, chameleon also obviously belongs to a reptile family so it is basically the world's smallest adult chameleon based of based in madagascar and one thing we have to note that this is the smallest size smallest in size but uh, uh, may is it is a male or female so which one is the longest and which one is shortest basically male is the shortest and female has the longest length uh, uh, of the chameleon so that uh, that must be kept in mind that is male is the shortest so the what uh, the brookesia nana which we have obtained uh, that is of the male that is of 21 uh, mm and uh, the female is of 29 uh, 29 mm so previously smallest uh, that was uh, de- till existed till the uh, discovery of the brookesia nana was brookesia micra it was the smallest uh, brookesia micra so our next topic is furnace oil or we can call it as fuel oil so what is the news uh, regarding this fuel oil or furnace oil see recently in the kerala coast uh, the kerala own state owned government uh, titanium uh, oil company uh, private corporation has recently uh, made a mistake or due to its uh, responsibility it has caused an oil spill in the kerala coast uh, or in the o- ocean waters indian ocean waters uh, in the gulf of bay or manar in the gulf state so uh, so basically this furnace oil uh, what is furnace oil mean see this is a crude oil distillation whenever we perform a crude oil distillation process the crude oil we obtain from the ground or uh, sea level sea beds we obtain the crude oil so this crude oil after the distillation process we get a residues so those residues are uh, 
uh, be based on that residues we get the furnace or fuel oil see the primary use of this fuel oil is used in steam boilers in ships uh, industrial purpose in abroad ships ba basically these are the fuel or we can call it as a um, engine engine oil it can act as a fuel uh, to those uh, ships engine oil boilers power plants and so on like that this is the primary use of this oil why why it is used in uh, other oil why why not the other types of oils like kerosene or petrol is is used in these uh, steam ships or power plants because fuel oils uh, if we add with other petroleum fa fractions like in during the distillation process we can't get a pure fuel oil right see even this fuel oil is mixed with some petroleum fractions uh, we get a variable viscosity v variable fractions of addition of this uh, fuel petroleum leads us to the variable viscosity and flash points so viscosity is nothing but the amount of thickness or we can call it as a liquidity it's a liquid uh, liquid property of a liquid it's a property of a liquid basically uh, uh, how the molecules interact with each other so basically it's a liquid property viscosity and also the flash point see the flash point is a uh, very important for any fuel what actually is the flash point is nothing but uh, see flash point is nothing but the ignition the amount of temperature the smallest amount of temperature required for a fuel to ignite with the ignition source is called flash point that is what is the basic minimum temperature at that minimum temperature if you given an ignition source to the fuel it the uh, fuel ignites so that is called a uh, flash point the flash point basically of a kerosene is much small because the flash point of this fuel oil is much larger than the that of kerosene and also kerosene does not belongs to this fuel oil so that is one thing to be kept in mind so flash points are nothing but the temperature smallest temperatures at which the fuel oil can be ignited with the help of an ignition source so the flash point of basically the fuel oil is much much greater than that of a kerosene so that is the reason why we use this fuel oil in the steam boilers power plants and also abroad ships and next comes our vigyan jyoti program vigyan jyoti program is basically of a department of science and technology program vigyan jyoti it is basically vigyan jyoti that is uh, science basically scientific talent must be nurtured in in basic in especially women girls girls and women in the science and technology field that is uh, improving or promoting the girls in the stem field science and technology and engineering fields um, so uh, uh, improve their career girls in improving their career in science and technology research and level creating a level playing field for the meritorious girl students in the stem that is science and technology and engineering and maths field and also many programs under the vigyan jyoti schemes are program are conducted by the department of science and technology B once again it is not conducted by the ministry of education but the department of science and technology is conducting this vigyan jyoti program counseling labs visits uh, uh, parent and uh, student and teacher counseling uh, and also the labs uh, and future uh, you see you can see after an graduation or a higher school level you know what are the fields uh, to be applied for exactly in the same way in the btec or higher education field uh, we need the counseling for the students as well as their parents uh, to know what are the career opportunities lab visits uh, and science camps uh, workshops uh, role model uh, interactions uh, uh, role model interactions webinars uh, and uh, academic support classes resource materials uh, and thinking activities and so on so these are included in the vigyan jyoti program uh, so that is about vigyan jyoti program our next uh, topic is world radio day see world radio day is basically uh, is celebrated on 13th february that is just before the valentines day 14th february Do you can uh, call, uh, remember like that world radio day is basically uh, it was first propounded that this world radio sh day should be there it was first propounded by unesco a member country of unesco in 2011 propounded that uh, we need to adopt a world radio day and promote the uh, radio access accessibility and also promote the medium and in 2012 in the next year itself uh, in subsequent year U unga united nations general assembly anga session unga session happened in 2012 it was adopted internationally as world radio day so what actually the world radio is day is why it is celebrated basically to increase the equal accessibility Uh, that is accessibility in, ter in terms of what in terms of promoting the medium maintaining the medium as a source and also expression of thought freedom of speech and also easily accessible to equally accessible to everyone and uh, uh, the th current theme is evolution and evolution uh, according to the evolution radio changes innovation according to the innovation radio adapts 
and connection according to new connections the radio also connects with the people so that is about the world radio day and next uh, our topic is dickinsonia see uh, dickinsonia is an, is a earliest living animal that is f discovered uh, recently see what this is a earliest known living species fossil that has been found in bimbetka rock shelters in madhya pradesh india it is found on the that is its uh, fossil or imprints uh, has been found on the roof of bimbetka rock shelters uh, bimbetka uh, uh, an uh, uh, extraordinary hint i am giving bimbetka is also an paleolithic site paleolithic archaeological site of india so in the roof of bimbetka rock shelters in madhya pradesh in uh, uh, this dickinsonia uh, imprint of the fossil of the earliest living animal has been found see we are telling this is an earliest animal so what is the time period of uh, its existence is nothing but from today nearly around 550 million years ago it has been existed 550 million years ago you can imagine how much uh, old one uh, before the human evolution like that or before the uh, maybe human existed i think uh, from 2 billion years ago it can be existed humans exist 2 billion years from the 2 billion years ago because uh, ice age uh, uh, pleistocene or uh, eocene era humans existed in the ice age yes so maybe 550 million years ago uh, it has been uh, existed in the that living cell has been existed in the bimbetka rock shelters maybe due to the it has been preserved due to the transition of the ice age it has been uh, preserved due to the ice age so it's basically an extinct genus obviously it is extinct genus and it is a basal animal what is a basal animal actually is see basal animal is nothing but due to the symmetry that is uh, obtained by the figure that is a, an, an organism or a living creature that has a symmetry is called a basal animal uh, it is uh, it belongs i told it belongs to the 550 million years ago so it belongs to an late acadian edicarian era we call this era as edic Edicarian era. This Edicarian era. These are the fossils from the those Edicarian era. These fossils uh, have uh, are, are in the form of imprints uh, or casts uh, in the sandstone beds. Uh. So what actually mean the, this Edicarian period? Edicarian period is nothing but uh, nearly around 95 million years. 95 million years time span. That 95 million years time span is called Edicarian period. So if there is a time span, so there must be a starting point and ending point. Uh. So what is the um, front that is uh, much older than the Edicarian era is a cryogenian period. Cryogenian period is nearly nearly 630 million years ago. 630 million years ago, the period is called as a uh, cryogenian period. So the from the late cryogenian period to the next, we need a starting point after the end of the Edicarian period. We another era started. So that is the beginning of Cambrian period. Cambrian period is approximately 540 million years ago. So three eras you have to remember three periods that is first is cryogenian period second is edicarian period third is cambrian period so this time span the the living species existed in which time span late cryogenian period plus edicarian period plus uh, early cambrian period nearly 551 million years ago so these are the three things that you have to keep in mind when coming to this earliest known living species edicarian period cryogenian period and cambrian period next comes is sanders Sanders is nearly is a an app instant messaging app like uh, whatsapp messenger uh, like instagram not like instagram but basically of calling and uh, uh, calling and text messaging futures why it has obtained it is basically developed by our government owned institute national institute national informatics center nic nic developed this sanders app is basically instant messaging platform see what is the specialty during the covid 19 times all the uh, organizations or the business organizations both private as well as the government shifted to the meetings online meetings so the apps like zoom uh, google uh, google duo so these external countries uh, chinese apps has been emerged in our country so to overcome those to fill that vacuum we our indian government has created the sanders app an instant messaging platform uh, initially it has been only for the government servants uh, but uh, it has been ex extended later on with uh, new additions uh, and it has been open for all so the one uh, important feature is that uh, we can have confidential mark on that message so such that it cannot be shared or uh, transferred copied so that is the future available in this sanders app uh, it is similar to whatsapp 
it is similar to whatsapp man no change in email id and number so once registered with some one email id and number you cannot change that email id and number if you want to change you have to re-register with new email id and new number so that is the things in the sandis app uh, and when coming to this news app that is in australia facebook blocks the sharing news stories in australia see basically what happening is uh, the tv news the tv our journalism has been see australian journalism uh, journalism uh, uh, lobbies or ch journalism uh, business uh, entities uh, they generate the content of news uh, in their own particular websites uh, but what happening in this uh, google and facebook is that they are sharing the links of those uh, they are the, they are sharing the links of those websites uh, in their own platforms uh, and thus uh, uh, diverting the media that is diverting the public traffic uh, towards facebook uh, in the in the part in the context of uh, availability of the news there but uh, uh, there is a huge loss that is the facebook and google are uh, these uh, search engines uh, not search engines particularly this facebook this facebook is encaching the news content uh, to divert the traffic to its own source uh, rather than diverting to the main uh, tv website or uh, article source uh, so this is the main problem between the australian news uh, uh, australian news chambers and uh, the digital media platforms like fb google pay so on like that so the tech companies uh, what the australian law has bought is the tech companies has to pay news uh, um, pay the news organizations or the news chambers uh, for the content they shared in their facebook so australia has bought a law with for uh, facebook and google pay for australian for promoting the australian journalism for promoting the australian journalism so that is a short uh, news about the facebook sharing news stories in the uh, uh, australia banned news stories so next thing is software defined radio see one more thing i have to say facebook has made an agreement with the european agency but it does not made uh, any uh, that is revenue sharing or uh, for the content they have shared they have made some arrangements with the european european uh, france eu U european union they have made arrangements uh, but they have not made the arrangements with other countries like uh, so uh, southern nation uh, southern countries so that is the thing to be noted and the next topic is software defined radio sdr see all electronic geeks you obviously know what the SDR is defined as because SDR is the only communication link uh, that can change from analog to digital communications. Uh. See, in the olden days, during the starting of electronics, uh, there has been a traditional way of communication systems uh, that is hardware. Basically, the electronics uh, wholly depend on the hardware in the starting uh, early period. That is, like example, mixers, filters, uh, amplifiers, modulators, uh, uh, CROs. Uh, like uh, signal receivers transmitters so this, those are basically of hardware type all the instruments or all the changes that we want to take uh, all the changes or like uh, what we have to say all the additional inputs that we have to give in that should be done in the hardware side but not the software side so that is a tedious task so to make or improve the uh, operat operatability or uh, data computation techniques uh, we need software so basically the analog data is converted into digital data and from there the software is used in analyzing the things data computations and also transmit processing the signals and uh, pro transmitting the signals processing the signals from input to output side so basically traditional communications use hardware and this software defined radio is an interlink or a bridge between the analog traditional communications to the digital communications uh, uh, that uses uh, implementation impl these software defined radios are implemented by the software uh, and so uh, this the, they also require the components like a to dc con a to a to d converters like uh, analog to digital converter digital to analog converter and sdr softwares uh, it, uh, and also front end front end can be operated by usb ethernet also nowadays for the mini uh, mini purposes so basically even for the software defined radio the front end is the rf amplifiers and hardware that is front end is required rf amplifiers filters attenuators are required for even for the software defined radio and next is solder uh, see because because of this upgradation our soldiers need to get upgrade for the net centric battle space so uh, our government of india in the defense military side has replacing the traditional uh, uh, traditional hardware into the software defined radio that is upgradation is going on in our indian army to uh, make them so uh, compatible with the net centric uh, internet centric battle space so that is the thing and next thing is of the biotechnology zol gensma gene therapy zol gensma gene therapy what actually is this see we have and this is see everything will be see any solution or any innovation will be for a certain particular problem so what is the problem in this uh, zol gensma gene therapy the problem is that uh, there has been a uh, muscular spinal muscular atrophy spinal muscular atrophy is nothing but it, there is a some uh, in the spinal cord we have a gray matter right in those gray matter uh, the spinal cord in those 
grey matter we have small amount of uh, motor neurons see obviously our brain functions with our brain has uh, our brain is the central nervous system our central nervous system also consists of spinal co spinal cord so uh, our spinal cord also has some functions to perform uh, similar to the brain like uh, actions uh, intense or quick response actions uh, and thinking uh, movement uh, 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 touch uh, sensory perceptions uh, so it has some uh, functions to do our spinal cord but what actually happening is uh, due to the spinal muscular atrophy uh, due to the spinal muscular atrophy uh, the uh, what we call uh, those uh, um, neurons motor neurons uh, are damaged because of those motor neurons are damaged or we can call so those motor neurons are damaged inside the gray matter or spinal cord so if we damage those uh, there is a uh, some what we call atrophy is de developed atrophy is nothing but uh, unable to do some perceptions or uh, lack of skills ability of skills to perform certain actions so muscular atrophy is developed that is through spinal cord that is spinal uh, spinal cord uh, spinal muscular atrophy is, is uh, spinal muscular atrophy is performed uh, uh, it uh, the disease develops so to uh, basically it is a uh, spinal muscular atrophy is a hereditary and also one thing to notice it is gene gene defect based on the defects in the gene based on the defects in the gene it's a genetic disorder basically that is based on the defects in the gene this uh, spinal muscular atrophy is developed so uh, for that the solution has been developed by the us based uh, researchers zol jensma gene therapy it is basically a type of injunction only one time it is given one time injunction injection it replaces the defective gene with a normal gene that is the defective part of the gene which destroys these uh, motor neurons in the gray matter part of the spinal cord the, it replaces with that a normal gene so hence uh, the disease can be cured. So basically, Zol Jensma gene therapy using the CRISPR Cas9. What what is the CRISPR Cas9? It is basically a gene editing tool using the CRISPR Cas9 method and also the Zol Jensma gene therapy. Uh, the the uh, what uh, this sp uh, spinal muscular atrophy can be cured. In 2019, US FDA has approved it uh, approved this therapy only for the children with aged less than two years and it's not uh, universally used. Okay, that that's the thing about the Zol Jensma gene therapy. So next thing about collection of DNA samples will lead to the Issues. There is an ongoing debate in our India based on the DNA profiling and also the biotechnology DNA um, bill. So let us discuss what actually is the DNA uh, technology on the DNA profiling in India. What is the status and also status uh, um, problems related to the privacy. See, Parliamentary Standing Committee committee has uh, given uh, drafted a bill called DNA Technology Use and Applications Regulation Bill 2019. See, what is this bill? DNA Technology Use and Application. See, the main problem is use and application. See, if you use and application this DNA technology, there is a concern for privacy. So the government is needed to regulate this. So then it came uh, so that it comes the dna technology use and application regulation bill 2019 so there is a main problem with the, the this dna technology regulation bill 2019 what are the main drawbacks uh, opponents like dissenting opinion has been given by the opponents like uh, aim all india majlis party and cpi maoist party has been given the many dissenting notes opinion that uh, uh, it is it, uh, the, this uh, particular dna regulation bill is does not address the violation privacy violation concerns uh, and also it can be used for caste or community profiling so this is the main problems of the uh, dna technology bill so let us uh, see the features of the dna technology bill dna technology use and application regulation bill 2019 uh, to 2019 so let us see what are the futures the bill consists of dna sampling and profiling of citizens so the dna sampling is nothing but collection of dna samples if required and also profiling it with the that is maintaining a database of um, all the classification of database with respect to the dna profiling and also it is uh, the bill provides only for the accused who are accused of crime the dna sampling and profiling is done only for the uh, crime accused and who are reported missing and storing and uh, when coming to the storage storing genetic info for only administration purposes basically the main aim of the motto of the dna regulation bill is that for administrative purposes we need dna technology or dna genetic info of the people we require so for this uh, storage banks are required so national and regional data banks dna data banks has been established how to be established this is in the still bill stage it has not uh, uh, come into the act so dna national and regional dna data banks should be established dna regulatory board must be established why the dna regulatory board to accredit these dna data banks or dna laboratories and and the punishments are also been prescribed for leaking the dna data of a per persons or group of persons for 
community profiling the punishment is 3 years jail or 1 lakh fine so that is uh, that the thing to be considered is just it's only the you know, that the privacy concerns of many people is just with the 1 lakh fine uh, the punishment must is not equal um, uh, there must be an improvements in the punishments so that is my personal opinion and leaking data of 3 years jail term or 1 lakh fine and we have already uh, many supreme court judgments uh, supporting this uh, privacy concerns uh, like putta swami uh, judgment uh, and also subramanyam swami judgment of 2019 so many uh, judgments are there aadhar case aadhar verdict of putta swami judgment uh, so these are the cases but uh, these many cases are there uh, supreme court has given it verdict and given the directions for the government uh, but yet uh, there is a no statutory framework uh, for protecting the privacy it is still in the constitution and uh, it is uh, uh, only uh, as usual as mentioned in the constitution that supreme court is the sole protector of the fundamental rights uh, the privacy uh, included in it uh, but there is no statutory framework uh, that is guiding to protect the uh, uh, statute that is that is no statutory framework uh, to protect the privacy issues so that is the main thing in this dna technology use and applications regulation bill 2019 so please subscribe to this channel for new more updates about the science talks also about the environment environmental concerns species biodiversity genetics uh, drug issues uh, economical international affairs ethics philosophy uh, socrates uh, we will discuss mainly about the philosophical thoughts and medicine ayurveda indian as well as foreign history and also the philosophers thinkers so many you can uh, available there at this channel so please subscribe for this science talks a new podcast initiative uh, for uh, developing a science culture uh, science nurturing the science in uh, students and also the wider audience outside india and also as well as inside india so thank you